Hello Vinyl community, let's have a look at some records I've been listening to in the last days. Um, as I probably mentioned in another video, I do have a quite a knack for Denis LaSalle. So um, I had a little Denis LaSalle marathon by listening to three of her albums. I'm just looking how to put them in a chronological order. Um, so let's start with uh, Here I Am Again. This is her album from 1975, I think, yes, came out on Westbound. Um, yeah, I think from the whole soul disco scene of the 70s, she might be my favorite singer. Um, it's always a great, great mixture of, of blues and um, soul and uh, sort of a disco sound uh, that she presents on her albums. This is Second Breath. Uh, this came out in 1976. Now what I like about her is uh, that she was really her own boss, which is not something you would say about many of the soul and disco singers, especially the women, especially the African-American musicians. Um, that's just how the pop business operated and probably still operates now. But she was very uh, uh, in control of her work. Um, basically all the songs on these albums are written by her. So The Bitch Is Bad, her album from 1977. Um, so um, if you just look at the the song they're basically all written by Denise LaSalle sometimes with uh, other musicians mostly alone she seemed to be one of the few um, uh, soul disco artists of this time that uh, was uh, kind of quite in control um, of her own productions of the results and how it's going to be presented yeah I think this band doesn't need much introduction soul searching by the average white band um, this is a, a Scottish uh, funk band, probably the most famous Scottish funk band, obviously. Yeah, excessive lifestyle though, but uh, those were the 70s. Still in the 70s, and this is actually everything. For, yeah, all, all these albums are from the 70s. Yeah, so um, this one, well known, Long Distant Voyager by the Moody Blues. Um, kind of the album that uh, gave them uh, sort of uh, their own renaissance uh, in the late 70s. Um, so this is after the departure of Mike Pinder and uh, this is uh, when Patrick Moras uh, stepped in to play the keyboards. It's a great album, Good Ideas, came out in a gatefold sleeve. I like the songs. Um, I've always liked Moody Blues, especially because of their um, late 60s album In Search of the Lost Chord. Um, but this might be just my second favorite album by the Moody Blues. Um, I mean, I've, I found it... Uh, well, how to put that? But um, over the course of years, I kind of uh, grown... Uh, a little more skeptical of the band, but simply because of this whole Patrick Moraz story. Um, so they kind of tricked him <laughs> out of the band history. Uh, this was a very major issue that was resolved in courts and um, it's still regarded as one of the most uh, um, kind of spectacular uh, court case uh, in rock history. And um, yeah. Sad. I have wish I would have wished that these old farts could have been able to sit down and just uh, find some amicable solution instead of trying to re retcon uh, their own band history and pretending like uh, Moraz was suddenly just sort of a hired hand that played a little keyboards, which is bullshit. Because if you listen to this album, uh, you immediately uh, recognize this sort of a change in sound uh, that happened from the previous album so there is a uh, I mean he never I don't think Moraz contributed much to Moody Blues as a composer 
but in his own words uh, he was basically not allowed to but he had a major influence on the sound of the band and uh, the way these albums were produced so uh, yeah not nice but um, yeah that happens when people earn money um, Novella by Renaissance beautiful album um, really like it this is a 1977 release on Sire Records um, yeah, if you know Renaissance, this is uh, once again a sort of a beautiful folky album um, with nice piano layers and uh, sort of ex excursions into Renaissance music and uh, yeah, great vocals, but that's what you would expect from Renaissance. It's a very nice album, it's a really good listen from time to time. Might actually be maybe my favorite Renaissance album. Yeah, and finally, Fragile by Yes. You've probably seen that one before. This is a very nice edition. I never looked up from one from when this uh, this print is. Um, I don't assume that it's that it's uh, first year edition, but it's possible. I don't know. It came out with this nice booklet here, so you have sort of a photographs of the band, uh, some words by Rick Wakeman, who was the new guy at this point. Um, yeah, beautiful album, but uh, I think at least 5,000 YouTubers already made a video about Fragile, so um, I will leave it at that. But um, yeah, I like it. It's I like I like the warmth of this album and uh, um, the songs are of course uh, impeccable. So great stuff. Um, and uh, I like I like the fact that this uh, this record is in a really good state. I mean the the disc um, and uh, yeah, that's it. I have nothing more to say. It seems. So I stop blathering and rambling and stuttering and um, just tell you, um, keep it spinning. And uh, yes, um, I hope you come by again when I make my next video. And um, well, if you want to like it, like it. I will like it too. So goodbye.